where when you go to you lead uh, one of the things that often people say is that it's the first conference they go to where leadership has been the focus so we might have a session on literacy but it's not about the classroom literacy practices it's how do you lead and implement a lead a literacy program uh, you might go to uh, a session on technology um, but it's not necessarily about the bits and bobs and how do you actually teach it's it has a little bit of that, but it'll have much more about how do you implement and how do you oversee and how do you help and how do you have impact over a group of people. And, and having that change in perspective, it, 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 is, it is, I think, underappreciated, but I think that coming to a leadership, a peer leadership conference like you lead can really help with that. I'm often asked, what's a good conference to go to? And often I will tell them to check out ULEAD. Today I am visiting with conference chair, Corey Haley, who is also a principal at Parkland School Division just outside Edmonton, Alberta. And Corey talks a lot about the purpose of gathering and the conference specifically, what is going to be exciting to learn there at the conference and just uh, the value of it as a professional learning component. This, this episode is brought to you, as always, by Advanced Learning Partnerships, where Dr. Katie Fodchuk and I will be representing Advanced Learning Partnerships at the ULEAD conference in April in Banff, Alberta. This conversation really talks about the broad offerings of the event and conferences in general, so I hope you enjoy my conversation with Corey Haley. Well, Corey, thank you for joining me today, and uh, we got a few things to talk about, but first of all, why don't we talk about uh, just uh, where you are at the moment and what you do day to day, because it's not uh, the, the main focus of our conversation. Yeah, thanks, Dean. Thanks for uh, having me on and inviting me to be, uh, to be speaking with you today. Uh, yeah, I'm day to day the principal of uh, Greystone Centennial Middle School in Spruce Grove, Alberta. That's part of Parkland School Division, just west of Edmonton. And I've been here for, for a couple of years in the middle school world. And yeah, it's a pretty good, pretty good place to be. And, and yeah, and so that, that leads you into your sort of uh, when you have free time on your hand, you are also running one of uh, Canada's largest uh, leadership conferences, as we were just talking before we hit the record button. Uh, the U Lead conference that takes place every year in Banff is uh, it is run by your uh, local Alberta Teachers Association, but it has a great, great reach. So uh, can you just maybe share, for those people that don't know about the conference, maybe just sort of provide a little context of of uh, maybe whatever history of you lead or just so people have a little better understanding of what the, what the event is about. Yeah, you betcha. Um, well, if you're uh, familiar with the Alberta Teachers Association, we know that it has many specialist councils. And so, you know, just like the English language people or the early education people or the phys ed, um, they would all have their specialist councils. They have one for leadership, too, and that's called the Council for School Leadership. And so their conference is uh, essentially you lead. And so they put on one conference per year that focuses on uh, leadership in schools. Uh, and it has been rather successful, to put it mildly. This is uh, not new. It has been going on for a long time, even before uh, it was called ULEAD. It was called things like Wacky Yak. And uh, it used to kind of travel around the province and things like that. But we've, we've kind of settled on a, on a winning uh, venue, which is uh, in Banff at the, Bearmont, at the Fairmont Banff Springs. And uh, a winning kind of time, too, which is in that April uh, time, right before it gets too busy with uh, planning for next year, it seems to be really good. And we bring together around a 1,000 participants. So these are all leaders throughout, not just Alberta, but um, I think that what we're, the conference has been, has been really well known and, and people have, have found it to be useful. And so now we get uh, every year a contingent from outside of Alberta, so BC. Saskatchewan, all the way to Ontario, and so a good Canadian contingent. And we also get a really good international contingent. So historically, we've had uh, quite a few people from Australia and New Zealand, 
And then we also have uh, quite a few from Iceland. In fact, this year we're having a, a good contingent from Iceland as well as Australia to join us. No, that's awesome. And again, I, I've, I've attended it a number of times and always found it to be sort of a world-class event. I remember, I think when you had Sir Ken Robinson uh, was the speaker. And so lots of, lots of big name speakers. What about this year? Who are you, who are you looking forward to uh, as you've doing your planning that, that people should be excited to spend some time with? Yeah. So this year we've, um, we've really thought about, you know, what are the themes that are, that are affecting education right now? And, um, as it stands, we've got a pre-conference and then the main conference on the pre-conference, we have two main themes. One of them is, uh, women in, in leadership. And so that's uh, piggybacking on some work that's been done by another uh, organization or committee within the ATA and just trying to, to look at that through leadership in, in women in education. The other pre-conference theme is Indigenous education and how can we lead the work towards reconciliation. And so in those two uh, pre-conferences, those will be kind of your two main themes. And then when we go through the other uh, main conference, we always like to... to to kind of have not just one main theme, but to have a couple things that we're working on. And so um, one of the ones is, is about equity in education. So how do we, how do we promote equity and how do we um, look at that through different lenses in education? And so I'll, uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing uh, a bunch of different speakers uh, on that, notably uh, Susan Aglu clark uh, will be joining us. She's got some um, some projects that she's going to be presenting and speaking about or correcting the narrative around Indigenous ways of knowing and how people per perceived. We've also got Desiree Cocroft, which is, um, she works for, for the Covey Foundation, but she has a very interesting perspective as an Afri African-American uh, speaker. And she's going to be talking to us about unconscious bias. So those are two that I'm looking forward to. Um, the other thing, when we look at schools and we look at what are the big factors with uh, education right now is, is mental health. I mean, wellness and burnout and, and not only for staff, but for, for our students is a big deal. And we've got uh, Stéphane Grenier, who is going to be coming in. And he is a huge advocate for mental wellness. Uh, he himself uh, is uh, a survivor of PTSD and uh, was, was actually a member of the Canadian Armed Forces for a long time. And as he kind of went through his journey of recovering from, from this traumatic incidents and, and having some, some poor health, mental health. Um, he's learned some things and become a huge advocate for that. And so we, we've got that kind of mental wellness. We've got the equity thing. Uh, but the other thing that we always don't want to forget, and that is educational leadership in more of a pure sense. And so from there, we're very uh, lucky to have Dr. Steve Mundy, who's going to be coming and joining us from the uh, from England, from the UK, and he was actually instrumental in creating one of their first leadership colleges throughout the UK over there. So how do we train people to become our next leaders? How do we really get that pedagogical leadership as well as the day-to-day -day, uh, running of affairs, and how do we marry those things? So, I mean, when we're talking about keynotes, uh, I'm honestly pretty pretty biased, uh, but I think that we've got a pretty great lineup this year. And it touches a lot of different themes that I think people are struggling with or, or dealing with or talking about in their schools. Yeah. And I mean, all those, you, you definitely touch on sort of the, the, the big topics. I think Indigenous uh, learning is something that everybody's trying to trying to get better at, right? And, and we acknowledge that uh, we, we haven't done as much as we should, and we're all relatively ignorant when it comes to what it is that we need to do. So bringing in people that can help us on that journey, and like you said, the wellness um, conversation is, uh, and that's that's something that we we definitely want to uh, support you in. We're, we're going to be there as well, supporting in that, particularly in that one. Um, but I, like, that conversation about leadership in general and 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 I'd love your perspective on the Alberta scene right now when I talk to people across Canada and the US and and this is something that I believe was very you know had been happening in the US even prior to the pandemic but has now definitely made its way here in Canada is just the whole idea of recruitment for leadership I you know that never you know when I, I talked to a superintendent recently who said, they had an application for a vice principal and they had lots of people applying because it's easy to apply now. You click a button and boom, your resumes. But she said the quality 
of applicants was quite poor because the people that we want that we think should be leaders are not as as they're not as interested in becoming leaders anymore. I don't know if that's something that you're seeing or the, like you just sort of have any perspective. And I'd like to hear from you from the Alberta perspective as a prince as a principal himself. Uh, what do you see on the horizon as far as the future of leadership? I think that's a really great question. I remember uh, when I was just starting my leadership journey, going to a, a, a conference session. Uh, with someone who'd actually done their PhD research around, you know, where are the next leaders coming from and, and what does that look like as people retire and, and people come in and they choose to uh, pursue a leadership position? Uh, yeah, I think that there is um, some trepidation around going into leadership. I think that at times uh, the, the job can be very taxing. I think also there are times when... Uh, there's perhaps not a great understanding of what it entails. And so leadership uh, and actually living that and knowing what, what, what a principal or what a school leader does on a day-to-day -day basis um, yeah, is not, it's not always putting out fire. So one of the things that I think is helpful and one of the things that has been the focus of the Council for School Leadership is that we are not the Council for School Principals. Uh, we are really about leadership development and, and our conference is um, wide ranging where I think the, the answer to your question about how do we attract and how do we get, get people to understand what leadership is, is saying, hey, you're a classroom uh, teacher, but I recognize some great leadership potential and qualities in you and a respected colleague goes up to these people and kind of says, hey, come along. Are you interested in this? because I think he would be really great. And piece by piece, they gain an understanding and an appreciation of what the job is and the impact, the really positive impact that you can have on, on, on schools and, and therefore communities and people's lives. But the other thing too is you bring them along and I think ULEAD can, can, can help with that. Where when you go to ULEAD, uh, one of the things that often people say is that it's the first conference they go to where leadership has been the focus. So. We might have a session on literacy, but it's not about the classroom literacy practices. It's how do you lead and implement a, lead, a literacy program? Uh, you might go to uh, a session on technology, um, but it's not necessarily about the bits and bobs and how do you actually teach. It's, it, it's, it has a little bit of that, but it'll have much more about how do you implement and how do you oversee and how do you help and how do you have impact over a group of people? And, and having that change in perspective it, it, it is, it is, I think, underappreciated, but I think that coming to a leadership, a peer leadership conference like you lead can really help with that. And, and yeah, practicing administrators and leaders can, can benefit. And then also those, those aspiring administrators can, can learn that, oh yeah, I think that I can have that. But I agree. It's a little bit difficult. Uh, there are times when people are, are a bit leery, um, but I think we've had good success with bringing them along, like I said, with that, with that relationship and, and seeing those great people with, with whom we think there are, is great potential, bringing them along. Well, and, and, you know, I think part of what everyone recognized and even more so after, you know, going two years without meeting face to face is, <laughs> is the value of gathering when, and what does gathering mean and how do we, how do we not, and, and we, this is not new but it's just become more elevated that when we do come together, that we give people opportunity to have conversation and to interact with one another. Uh, I, one of the podcasts, I, the first podcast that I did in this series is with Dr. Cameron Hausman from the university of Manitoba, who did extensive research on the work life of principles and said that, you know, with all of the, and very interesting research in terms of what's happening and problems or whatever. But, but one of the things he talked about as being uh, an anecdote for, some of the challenges they face is that they feel part of a community that they're connected with other people. And, and the job, as you know, can be lonely at times. It, it just is. I mean, you're the only, I mean, you, whether you have a vice principal or not, uh, you're, you have this weird kind of juxtaposition between what's happening in the classroom and, and how the district leads. And so, you know, you're always sort of toggling those things and it can be lonely. And so I feel like coming to a conference has that potential of saying like, I, I want to go to a lot of really interesting sessions and learn from people, but I also want to have 
an opportunity to to ask a Corey or whomever, hey, like, how do you deal with this issue, or what what what's your take on on stuff? So, uh, can you talk a little bit about what opportunities might exist at the conference for people to have those more informal conversations and connection time? Yeah, you bet. We know that that's a huge, huge part of why people come to to you lead. Um, to, uh, to, to, to kind of give you another argument or, or to, to say, yeah, I really agree with what you were saying. Not only is it, uh, can it be lonely inside your schools? Um, now I'm in a, a suburban community, you know, the schools around me in my division are not too far away. I've got a couple kilometers down the road, but I can't imagine what it's like in some of these rural remote schools where your nearest principal or admin colleague is a couple of hours down the road. Um, or, you know, in Parkland, we've got one school that's a fly-in school. Uh, and so trying to connect with them. And yeah, it's become easier through technology and through video conferencing. But yeah, that, that connection or that face-to-face is, is so important. And so um, some of the things that we have is um, we've got some shared meals, which I think is actually people don't don't recognize the networking potential. So one of the things that that I really appreciated in my years in ULEAD before I was uh, involved was, you know, you sit down for breakfast in the morning and you go join a table. And uh, I would actually purposefully go join a table where perhaps I didn't know everyone. And so I remember uh, one of the first years uh, meeting some some of my colleagues from from Battle River down in uh, Camrose. And yeah, just connecting with them. And in fact, that, that uh, connection is one of the reasons I'm part of, uh, of, of the U Lead Conference right now, meeting uh, Thomas Midbo, who at that point was a principal over there and, and was big, uh, a big part of CSL. Um, the other thing too is we have social nights because we know that it's not just about the learning, it's also about that connection. And so we've got a dueling pianos night on the first day where, where people can come in, um, check out the entertainment, but also just uh, connect and talk. And so those different ebb and flow of conference sessions and then being at the Banff, uh, the Fairmont Banff Springs and, and being together with other colleagues is, is so important. Um, and, and we've got about a thousand of them. And so we've had to cap registrations. Last year, we actually had over a thousand. Uh, it almost became too many just because we, had, we didn't have space for everyone. But yeah, having a thousand people with whom you can connect and you can bounce those ideas off. And as you're walking down to the next session and sitting down, you go, oh, did you go to that keynote? Yeah, what did you think of that? Oh, it made me think of this. Oh, that's a great idea. Huge, huge. And I think that it also um, helps us because that loneliness is one of the things that we've recognized by bringing in someone who's going to speak about mental wellness Yeah, uh, because mental wellness is a big issue right now. And I think that that isolation and, uh, and the loneliness that you talked about could be, could be a part of that. And so knowing that you're not alone out there, knowing that you get a couple numbers where, you know, when you come into a, a particularly difficult situation, you can reach out. I think that those are very helpful to help us be well as well. Well, and you know, it, it, it helps to have it in a place in a beautiful place like Banff, because, you know, as part of the wellness, I mean, you know, listen to sit outside and be able to stare at those mountains and have a conversation with somebody and just re-energize. That's all part of it. So I think that's strategic and I know, um, it it makes a difference for people. And, and, uh, I, I don't, I don't consider it a luxury. I think it's more of a necessity. If you're going to do something that you want to be able to get away and, um, you know, really, really find value in it and settings and environments, uh, certainly contribute to that. So, um, when we launch this sometime in mid March, I don't know if we'll all be sold out or not, but in case people do want to check out and say, Hey, what's going on with this conference, where would they go to find out more information? Yeah, the easiest place is to go to ulead.ca. Uh, our website is the easiest place. You can register there. You can uh, get a link to the schedule. You can see our keynotes. Um, it's uh, it's really the place for all of that kind of stuff. And, and in fact, you can uh, sign up if you're in a in an administrator or a, just a teacher in Alberta. You can actually also sign up for the Council for School Leadership. And we've got a newsletter. And if you sign up for that, you can get some regular updates that come right to your email inbox too. Um, perhaps you'll miss out on this year, but don't want to miss out on the following years. That's probably the best way to get it uh, to send to you. 
Great. And I know you can listen to some podcasts that you've done with some of the speakers. If you want to kind of prep yourself, I, I like to do that before I go to an event, learn a little bit more about people so I can prepare myself and better, better engage with the conversations. Yeah, absolutely. Those, uh, we've got, a, a not only a podcast, but we've also got a Yuli, uh, sorry, a YouTube channel and you can check out some of the, our keynotes. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it has been, and, and as you kind of said, Dean, really nice to speak with some of those keynotes. It's, it's one of the reasons that I am so genuinely interested in going to you lead this year myself. Again, I said, I'm biased, but at the same time, um, as someone who is looking for answers as well, as we go through this, our whole team is practicing leaders and we want to answer our own questions because we feel like if we come from, from our own problems of practice and we say, Hey, what kinds of things are we dealing with or trying to solve? Uh, we think that that's probably going to land really well for other, um, for other leaders in, in Alberta and throughout the country and, and probably the world. And so, yeah, check those out. They're, they're definitely nice and short and sweet and you kind of get a sense of what the person's going to speak about or, or if this is going to be the right type of thing for you. Fantastic. All right. Well, I'm going to finish with a few uh, just sort of personal questions. I like to, like, again, as, as I'm doing this sort of cross Canada, there's a little bit of a, uh, you know, personal insights and some uh, geography kind of stuff involved here. But I mean, I, my first question is like, what are you currently reading? And it doesn't have to be professional. It can be just fun reading. What are you reading right now? If anything? Yeah. Well, do you know what's funny is that uh, I'm revisiting an old classic uh, professionally, I got one right here inside the black box, which is some Dylan William uh, action coming. And we've uh, yeah. we're kind of revisiting some assessment, Little assessment stuff lately. Sure, and I know it's old, but I still think that it's got some some good stuff there. Uh, personally, I'm always I'm always reading a book. Uh, the one that I'm reading is uh, Bill Bill Morno's new book. I uh, just came out with. I think it's called Where to Now. Um, talking about government and, and the role of, of people coming in to government and the trappings of that. And, and it's kind of interesting to me as a former high school social studies teacher, <laughs> uh, the inner workings of, of, of governments are always really interesting. So those are two things that I'm reading. Right now. Well, and I love that you pointed out somebody that, you know, that book is, I don't know, probably 20 years old now, uh, inside the black box. And I remember, you know, that was a transformative concept for me in my early teaching careers, like rethinking assessment. So I, I love it. You know, it's great to find new stuff, but I don't think we should discard some of that old stuff too. What about, uh, are you listening to any podcasts, binging any Netflix, uh, any series that's kind of captured your attention outside of school? Well, this is my uh, shameless pug for the uh, the You Lead podcast, which comes out uh, fairly regularly. Um, and uh, and you know, again, I can be a little bit biased because I'm the one that uh, helps out with that. But uh, do you know the other the other one that I really love, and I know it's not education, but I always learn something from is anything that Adam Grant puts out. I just love his uh, Life at Work stuff, and I know he's came out with another one that's kind of the same, but it, it seems like they're just double double posting it. Um, yeah, he his his stuff is just excellent, and I feel like it is universal if you are in not just leadership but any positions where you're dealing with others. And he's uh, I think he calls himself an organizational psychologist, and so, yeah, uh, really really been loving his stuff, and and think that uh, it's probably worth it to check out as well. Well, and I like him because he always creates a little cognitive dissonance, like he'll come, he'll come a take like, whoa, I thought about that, and then you 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 sort of makes you dive into understanding a little bit more. I like that approach. One of my favorite things is, uh, I don't know if you've heard it, him and uh, Malcolm Gladwell actually have a debate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, these are two people that I think are just, you know, some of the some of the greatest, very interesting thinkers right now. Yeah. And they actually have diff diverging points of view on some stuff. And so it's, it's um, if you kind of know Adam Grant, he really is on right now about how do we change our minds and how do we, uh, accept and have these discussions and debates. And I thought it was such a great way to model to people who obviously have staked their careers and written books on two divergent ideas, but they can get up there and actually have the conversation. I think it was, it was so great. So if yeah, that's a particular one, if you can find the, the, the conversation between Malcolm Gladwell and Adam Grant, that was really good. And my last question is, I mean, <clears throat> Edmonton, I guess they're still called the city of champions. I don't know if that's a very relevant term anymore, uh, but everybody's fingers crossed. This is the year because 
you have Connor McDavid. But for those people who are uh, visit Edmonton or thinking about ever coming to Edmonton, I always like to have people share like what's a what's a hidden gem in the city of Edmonton or surrounding area that people should check out that they might not know if they just sort of did the top things to see in Edmonton or do in the area. What's your hidden gem? My hidden gem, and I don't know if it's so so hidden, is that uh, is is the River Valley that's in Edmonton. You, you think about what a what a gift that undeveloped stretch of nature is, uh, going from Devon all the way up past Fort Saskatchewan, and and I think that this is the year that they're actually going to connect the the paths that go all the way through it. Uh, I'm a big outdoor person, a big runner. Uh, I did a big trail race in that river valley over the over the fall. And, um, and I often say, you know, you can stay downtown Edmonton and just drop down into the river valley and it feels like you're a million miles away. It doesn't feel like you're in the middle downtown of a city. And so if you're ever here and you need a little escape or whatnot, I, I think Edmonton's River Valley is. I love it. I So, you know, for years I would be in Edmonton, you know, whatever, four or five times a year. And I always just made a point if I had, you know, two or three hours before my flight left, I, I had a, I had that map of the, the trails and I would just yep. go to a random trail in that river valley and I would take pictures of it. And people would say, like, where are you? Like, you must be in, yep. you know, in the middle of the Rockies somewhere or or wherever I said I'm in Edmonton and they go like, no, that doesn't make any sense. But you, I mean, you, you described it, you would know better than I do, but I just, I just always appreciated if I had a half an hour, I would just go pick a little loop to walk and it would just be like, wow, this is, it, it, it's quite spectacular. I don't know of another city that has that kind of uh, contrast of, of urban and I don't, don't even say rural. It's just like pure nature. It's just amazing. Yeah. It's such a, it's such a hidden gem and, and like I said, so accessible. I love what you said. So a lot of people, they'll they'll stay downtown and they don't realize that four blocks away is the edge of the river valley and you drop down in and, and you're, you, you've yep. kind of got this, um, this whole completely different world. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Corey. Uh, the next time I see you probably will be in the middle of April in Banff and I look forward to that. And I, I thank you for sharing about you lead and, and the work you're doing and, uh, uh, and again, excited for that, excited for that event. Thanks so much for, uh, for having me, Dean. I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to seeing you in April at, uh, you lead and, uh, yeah, any of your listeners, uh, this year or next year. Yeah. Check us out. Sounds good. 